Okay, solubility and saturation. We have so far approached solubility from a very qualitative approach. We've looked at solubility guidelines and said that an ionic salt substance dissolves in water or it doesn't. If it doesn't, it's forming a precipitate. Well, solubility is actually defined quantitatively. It's the maximum mass in grams of a solute that can dissolve in a given quantity of the solvent at a particular temperature. And you'll see in this solubility curve that I've drawn below that the y-axis is labeled solubility and the x-axis is labeled temperature. Right, rise, raise that up a bit for you. So all components of the definition are contained in this solubility curve. You'll see the y-axis is labeled as solubility, so it's the grams of solute in 100 grams of water, and the x-axis is temperature, so at a particular temperature. So let's have a look at how this works here. For example, if we were going to talk about 80 grams, right here, 80 grams of NaNO3, so 80 grams of NaNO3, in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius. So according to this solubility curve, so this yellow graph here, yellow line, we can see that 80 grams, reading off to the left here, 80 grams, right, uh, in according to the labeling here, 80 grams of solute in 100 grams of water and because we're right on that yellow curve, we'll dissolve at 10 degrees Celsius. So track, track your eye. I don't want to mark this diagram up too much because we're going to use it a fair bit, but come right down to 10 degrees Celsius. So this is the solubility of sodium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius. Now, does the solubility change? Can we get more than 80 grams if we raise the temperature to 20 degrees? Well, sure we can, right? We're up over 90 grams of the solute. Now, is every solute have the solubility of sodium nitrate? Well, doesn't look like it. At 10 degrees Celsius, for the red curve, KNO3, we can get, looks like about 17 or 18 grams of KNO3 to dissolve. So potassium nitrate's not very soluble at 10 degrees Celsius compared to sodium nitrate. What about sodium chloride, the green curve? Well, if I come up at 10 degrees Celsius, I realize, oh, it's a little bit more soluble. I can get almost 30 grams, not quite, maybe 28 grams of sodium chloride to dissolve in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius. So the first thing, there's you know a few takeaways here. One is that for each of these solutes, as you increase the temperature, the mass of solute that can dissolve in the 100 grams of water does increase. So solubility increases as the temperature increases. And we see that that's true for all three of these solutes. And that is the common pattern when so the solid, the solute is a solid. We can also see that the solubility of some substances varies greatly, like potassium nitrate, pretty low down at zero degrees Celsius and pretty high up at 60 degrees Celsius. Whereas sodium chloride you know, we can dissolve almost 30 grams at 0 degrees Celsius, and we're really only at 40 grams once we hit 80 degrees Celsius. And so for different solutes, we do see variances in the changes in solubility over temperature. So there's a bunch of different questions that I could ask you here. Oh, and sorry, one other thing to point out. Um, just, you know, the relative solubility, just noticing that all of the Y values for sodium nitrate, they're all, you know, above 70 grams here, right? Close to 80, even up to 100 grams here. Sodium chloride never even gets close to that. And so there certainly is quite a variation amongst the different solutes. So below I have a few questions here based on the solubility curve. So trying to keep the curve on the page and still start to bring some of the questions into play. So number one, state the solubility of KNO3 at 30 degrees Celsius. So I gave you an example here, right? Recalling the definition that you wrote down, make sure that when you state the solubility, 
that you state the maximum mass, which means be right on the line, like right on this line or right on this line or right on this line for whichever solute you're talking about. So state the maximum mass of the solute that can dissolve in a given quantity of solvent, here we go, at a particular temperature. So make sure to include all of those components. So state the solubility of KNO3 at 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you'll see that I used the graph, went to 30 degrees Celsius right here, and followed that up to the red curve, which is KNO3, and then read across and thought, okay, we're above, you know, 30, halfway between 30 and 40, so maybe 37, 38 grams of KNO3 will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius. And that is the solubility of KNO3 at that temperature in that amount of solvent. So no more or no less, right? This is the maximum amount that can dissolve. Okay, next question. Which solute is the most soluble at 10 degrees Celsius? Okay, so at 10 degrees Celsius, we see the red curve's pretty low, then green, yellow is definitely highest, right? At 80 grams. And so NaNO3 was the yellow curve, so sodium nitrate is the most soluble at 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, next question, number three. Here I'm asking and bringing in the second term in our title, saturation. So I'm asking you to classify the solutions that I have coming up in A, B, and C as either unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated solutions. Now you'll notice here that I copied and shrunk that solubility curve. You have it, you know, easy to refer to in your notes. Hopefully you sketched it out. Um, for me, I kind of shrunk it and I'm hoping we can still read it and use it so that I don't have to make you dizzy um, moving the page up and down all the time. First though, we need to understand the idea of unsaturated. Um, so unsaturated is when the solution has less than the maximum amount. And so essentially we're under the curve, under the curve. So when you come over to, let's say, sodium chloride, so at 60 degrees Celsius, for example, if we have 20 grams of, so again, I'm looking at the 20 over here. If I have 20 grams of NaCl in 100 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius, do you notice how that point falls below the green curve, below the NaCl? So here, we have less than the maximum amount. Remember, right at the line, that's the maximum amount, which is just over 30, it looks like. So here I'm looking um, at having less than that maximum amount, and therefore that's an unsaturated solution. Now, whether that puts a lot of particles in the solution or not really depends on the amount of moles that you get from 20 grams of the sodium chloride. Recognize that I could have 80 grams of sodium nitrate way up here at about 20 degrees Celsius, and that would also be under the curve. So the key with the unsaturated solution is that we have less than the maximum mass of solute. actually dissolved. So what would happen if you added another crystal here? Well, it should dissolve, right? Because if we don't have the maximum mass dissolved yet, then if we add an extra crystal, it should dissolve. Now, what happens in a saturated solution? Well, a saturated solution is when you're on the curve. So here we were below the curve, the solubility curve, and here we're now on the curve. So for example, the sodium chloride, instead of having the 20 grams there, if we had come all the way up here right on the curve, then at 60 degrees Celsius, with however many grams that is of sodium chloride, reading off our y-axis, that would be, that would create a saturated solution. So when you have the maximum amount dissolved, that's when you have a saturated solution. So this is when you have the maximum mass of solute dissolved. Now, supersaturated, well, 
Supersaturated is when you are above the curve. So above the curve, right? And it's dissolved. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you take a solution here, and let's go back to our sodium chloride. So if I took this, and what, what mass would this be about? Like 35 grams maybe? If I've got 35 grams of sodium chloride dissolved, right? Because I'm on the line here, dissolved. What if I go and add in, you know, two extra grams? Well, if I go and add two extra grams, then I'm still going to have, let's say I've got these dots here representing the original 35 grams dissolved. And if I go and add two more grams in there, then those two grams are just going to sit on the bottom. The solution phase is still going to be saturated. This part here is still going to be saturated. But now there's going to be excess solute that's not dissolved. Okay, well, to prepare a supersaturated solution, we first heat this solution up. So we raise the temperature until those, those extra two grams dissolve. So I'm going to need to raise the temperature above 80 degrees Celsius for sure to get that to dissolve. So once all of that dissolves and it's at a higher temperature, then we need to cool it slowly. And the idea is to cool it so slowly that all of the original solute that was dissolved plus the two grams extra that are now dissolved, that all of those particles actually stay dissolved in the solution. So you're back to the original temperature but the two grams that were extra undissolved are now staying dissolved. So incredibly, we've been able to prepare a solution that is super saturated, that actually contains more than the maximum mass of solute that can dissolve at that temperature in that mass of solvent. So we actually have greater than the maximum mass of the solute. Those are very unstable solutions. As soon as you drop a crystal into here, all of the extra solute will start to recrystallize. And so they have to be cooled very slowly with no agitation uh, in order to prepare them. Okay, what would happen if you added an extra crystal to this saturated solution? Well, hopefully you're thinking that really is just not going to dissolve because we have the maximum mass of solute. If you want to prepare a super saturated solution, you need to heat up the solution, raise the temperature so the excess solute dissolves. Essentially, this will be unsaturated at this point, and then cool it back down to the original temperature so that all of the extra solute remains dissolved. Okay, so in question A, 30 grams of KNO3 in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius. Is that solution unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? So go ahead and do A, B, and C. Uh, I do change the solute each time and the temperature, so make sure you pay attention to that. Okay, and so for A, 30 grams of KNO3. So I used, I went to the 30 here and came across at 40 degrees Celsius and notice that I was under the curve. So I'm doing a red dot because I did KNO3 in red. So notice that I'm under the red curve. Therefore, that's an unsaturated solution. 90 grams of sodium nitrate. Here's the 90, right, at 10 degrees Celsius. Notice I'm above the yellow curve. So if that 90 grams has gone through this whole process here, and cooled back down to 10 degrees Celsius and it's all still dissolved, then that's a supersaturated solution. 40 grams of the NaCl, so 40 grams of the NaCl. In, I know I'm not on graph paper here, but in my estimation, I'm right on the curve at 80 degrees Celsius. That's a saturated solution. Okay, what mass of solute would be required to saturate a solution of 20 grams of KNO3 in 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius. So what mass of solute, what mass of KNO3 would be required to saturate a solution 
that already has 20 grams of KNO3 and 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so again, I'm working not on graph paper on a very small grid here, but the original 20 grams is dissolved. I can see I'm under the curve, so it's unsaturated. And as I follow up at 30 degrees Celsius here, I realize that it looks like maybe 38 grams is what can dissolve, right? That looks to be the maximum mass. So how, what mass do I need to add in order to saturate the solution? Well, I have to get up to the curve. So from 20 up to 38, the difference would be 18 grams. Okay, I just realized here that I didn't give you the temperature here. So let's say at 80 degrees Celsius. So what mass of solute will remain undissolved when 50 grams of NaCl is added to 100 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius?